right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Todd Palmer, who is up in Detroit, Michigan. How are you doing, Todd? I'm doing great, John. I'm doing great. But I do wish I was in San Diego. It's one of my favorite <laughs> cities in America. Yeah, well, maybe not this weekend because it's going to uh, apparently rain heavily, so which is kind of ah, unusual. But that is very our, unusual, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's our few days of rain for the rest of the year, probably. Um, yes. And, and Todd is, um, he's the chief rule breaker. And that's why we like to have people on who are, who are rule breakers, mold breakers. Um, and what we want to talk about today is fail forward leadership. So, Todd's four-step formula that successful leaders use to turn their failures into a catalyst for success. And I guess, uh, Todd, this year being as crazy as it has been and all the obstacles that come up, there's probably a lot of people who are looking to try and turn what they, uh, turn what they probably perceive as the failure of this year into something positive going forward. And it's been a very testing time for leaders, whether they're small businesses, leading larger businesses or whatever. So um, can you outline your four-step formula and maybe with a particular emphasis on this year and, and sort of how failure, maybe failure isn't the right word, but how these obstacles and challenges have really like put people in difficult situations? Oh, abs without a doubt, without a So uh, to, to outline the, uh, the process, I'll tell you a story about one of my favorite clients, myself. Um, so it, I I'm a retired CEO, and now I, my main business is speaking from stage, um, writing books, and coaching CEOs and leaders around mindset and growing businesses. And my main business model for marketing was to get on stage, do po you know, talk to some audiences, do podcasts, things like that. So within six weeks in March, uh, or within two weeks, six of my, my speeches were canceled. Thankfully, like a, like a good salesperson, I got prepaid on the upfront, so it didn't hurt the cash flow, but it, it, it was an, an absolute crush of missed opportunity, as I thought. So the first step in the, in the four-step process is to recognize my mindset. Well, my initial mindset is I was upset. I was hurt. I was angry. I was bitter. And that lasted for a couple of days. But then I realized why do I really do this? And I doubled down on what my purpose is. About 12 years ago, I was really blessed and fortunate to work with a guy named Simon Sinek in The Power of Why. And I worked with him for two years to find two words. My two words are improve lives. I thought, all right, I can't go speak from stage. I can't improve lives from there. I can still do podcasts. That's great. What else can I do? So I created an intention, which is the second step of the process. First, we recognize the mindset, what's not working. Second step is create an intention. Don't have an expectation of what you'd like to see happen. So my intention was, I want to get my message out to the world. How else can I do that? I want to sell, but I can't sell from stage. Mm -hmm. Third step is to create a strategy around that intention, which ties back into ultimately where I want to go. And I started volunteering everywhere. I, I was on social media. I was on webinars. I was reaching out through, through groups I'm part of, like EO and YPO and Vistage. And I started volunteering my time. So I thought if I couldn't speak to my ideal customer, my ideal audience member, the CEO, the entrepreneur, the leader in crisis and chaos, and in a big room, where else will they be? Well, they're asking for help in these groups. So I started yeah. volunteering a lot of my time. And within 42 days, I spoke with 67 CEOs, and I helped them get unstuck, teaching them the process of recognize where they are, honor where they are, recognize mm -hmm. that you know, change comes from two places, basically. Change comes from our decisions that we need to change differently. My mistakes, and I can talk about those for days, or I can take, deal with changes thrust down upon me like we are in current COVID situations. So I'm in that iterative stage, and then I just tried a bunch of the different things, which is the fourth step. Go out, push to marketplace, try different things. It's almost the life by design model. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beta this, this process this week. I'm going to beta that process next week. What worked, what didn't, how can I learn? And then I put it back in the top of the funnel and cycle it through again and again and again. So the, the happy ending to my story is within the last six months, uh, with having all, nearly all of my marketing traditional uh, models taken away, I've doubled my coaching business. And I just completed my second book literally one week ago today. Excellent. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. And that book, that book will be released when? That book is going to be out uh, by February, and it has a lot of COVID stories in it. And the title is From Suck to Success, 
a transformative yeah. guide uh, to um, uh, uh, extraordinary leadership. And it, 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 it ties in like through what we're talking about right now is what can we do with the world that has been thrust on upon it? Half mm -hmm. of the book is getting unstuck around our mindset. For, you know, intention is so powerful because it can be and both. Intention has different tributaries off its main river where expectations typically are, I, I either expect I'm going to win or I expect mm -hmm. I'm going to lose. There's not a whole lot of play in there. So, um, so that's coming back to mindset. I, I just want to focus on that for a moment. And to your point, right, is so nobody's fault. The pandemic happened, right? No, no, nobody's fault. It happened to everybody and everybody had to varying degrees. It had an impact on their lives. Now, the only thing you can do in that situation, as you said, is, yeah, you can, you can feel sorry for yourself for a little bit if you need if you need that time. We all need that time, but as long sure, as you sure. make as long as you make it a very short window. And you, but the thing is, it's all about, isn't it? At the end of the day, is sort of taking the power back and saying, okay, um, I'm responsible for my situation, my personal situation, and that's Agreed. the only one I can really impact, and that's the one I have to fix. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's funny when I, I one of the very first uh, webinars I did was called the Itty Bitty Shitty Committee. It was how we talked to ourselves <laughs> inside of our mindset. Mm -hmm. And we told I told the story of when I really realized that my mindset was my biggest bottleneck in my business, that I as the leader was the biggest problem in my business. And that's when I hired a coach. And I brought in a coach because I was $600,000 in debt. I was two mm -hmm. months away from running out of all of my money. And I had a toxic and dysfunctional culture of underperforming specifically recruiters and salespeople in a, in a staffing company that were completely underperforming and I was allowing it to happen. And through the process of working with him on September 9th of 2006, I brought him in September 1 on the 6th, I fired my entire company and I started over. And I started working through the process in, the, in that world, that was a world I controlled. That was yep. decisions that I had made. And so I had to really own that. So when I would tell that story at the beginning of the pandemic, and then I would pivot into, you know, the, a lot of these things that are happening to us are being thrust down upon us, not necessarily being created by us. Now we have a choice. Now we can make a different decision. Just like I had to in 06, we can make different decisions today. So I think there, there's so much that we can control from a mindset perspective. We may have to reformulate what success looks like. You know, it used to be grow and scale our businesses. For a lot of people during these tough times, success is staying in business. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's a great point. And, and, I, and I was like the idea of, you know, personal accountability, because it's a very liberating thing is when you actually take accountability for your circumstances and you say, yeah, this is external things, but how I react to them and the decisions I make, that's really what impacts, you know, my, my particular situation. And I think oftentimes people shy away from that personal accountability uh, you know, for various reasons, but I don't think they realized the liberating effect of it. It's empowering. It, when I, it's kind of like when I own my crap, I can now do something with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and when I, it's when I, you know, when I blame it on the rest of the world or I blame it on the marketplace or I blame it on the client who didn't buy or I blame it on COVID or I blame it on the government, I, blame, I take no responsibility for that, which mm -hmm. psychologically actually puts me more in a victim state. And yeah. I, it's so funny that you mentioned that you live in, you're in San Diego. Uh, mm -hmm. I, have, I still use a coach. So I coach and I use a coach. My coach is based out of San Diego. And he's one of the world's leading neuroscientists. And he talks mm -hmm. about that what, when, when, we, when we, we get reactive, we get fired up, we get triggered when we're not taking accountability, when we're not taking responsibility. And it, it's, it's not the responsibility from the perspective of well, always me, I'm a complete, you know, the, my itty bitty yeah. shitty committee is telling me what a failure <laughs> I am. It's the responsibility of, okay, this is my brutal reality. Go back to the great uh, Jim Collins and the good to great. This yeah. is the Dr. Yale Paradox. This is my brutal reality. I'm going to make my defining moment COVID. And, and here's what yeah. I'm going to learn from it. And it's going to suck right now, but it's going to get better in the future. Same thing I did back in 06. I tell everybody, September 9th, 2006 is the day I grew up as a business owner. It's the worst day of my career. And now it's become the defining moment of, of my coaching practice because that's where I learned to be a better leader, be a better entrepreneur, and be a better coach. Yeah, it's funny. I, I always tell this story. There's a friend of mine who, uh, so, who has a friend who, in his business, he always had two. He had two things up on his wall. He had his Harvard business degree, his MBA from Harvard, and he had his first uh, bankruptcy chapter eleven, whatever bankruptcy. <laughs> I'm not. And heard he a always, story like that. yeah. Okay. And he always said, he always said to people, he goes, "Which one? Which of these do you think I learn more from?" Oh, and, yeah. And he said, always. He goes, he goes that the bankruptcy. The bankruptcy taught yeah. me everything I ever needed to know about business. Oh, for sure. And it's, it's when you're, you're, 
your proverbial back is against the wall. I mean, Oh mm-hmm. six, you know, my son comes to me, he's 11 years old at the time. His friends, you know, I was honest with my kid. Like, yeah, things are bad. We may lose our house, which is, you know, mm-hmm. not what yeah. your 11 year old <laughs> wants to hear. And, you know, he said to me, you know, why don't, why don't we file for, ba- why don't you file for bankruptcy dad? I talked to Steven's dad and he suggested you right. do that. And I said, because it can't, it can't, because I've not done it. I'm, I'm now finally realizing I have to take responsibility. I'm now finally yeah. realizing. So the flip of that is we make, you know, we get out of bed, we get on the Inc. 5000 six times as one of the best growing companies. And I'm pretty excited about that. But the best reward of, of, of leaning through that uncomfortable times, almost having to file bankruptcy is the lesson that it taught my son. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I, I think that's so profound. And, and, and you just uh, mentioned something there about negative self-talk. I, I, I read this in psychology today a while ago and, and I keep, um, I'm probably getting the, the statistic wrong, but it was either 67 or maybe more percent of our daily self-talk is negative. So oh, I that's, completely yeah, believe that. And that's something that is entirely within our, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy to stop that little voice saying negative things, but that's entirely within our own um, purview to be able to rectify that. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. What, what I, so what my coach has taught me, he's like, recognize that it's there. Don't pretend it's not yeah. happening. Yeah. Hey, cause the, you know, so for me, I was, when I was a startup entrepreneur, I was really good at being very self-reliant. It came from my childhood challenges sometimes. Cause a lot of, yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs that they really look back, the entrepreneur they show up is, is because of the childhood they, they were, were raised in sure. both by happenstance and by, by circumstance. And for me being a rugged individual served me well until it didn't, when I'm trying to grow mm-hmm. and scale my business and I'm, I'm handing things off and I'm delegating and then I'm taking it back because I like the, I like the joy of fixing things. And my staff saying to me, you know, you really, you really enjoy coming in behind us and fixing our mistakes. Do you realize that you're also creating mistakes? Essentially, you're the chief firefighter putting the fires up, but you're also the chief arsonist. You're setting all this stuff on fire. <laughs> and, it, and I'm working through these challenges and through these issues. And it, what I finally said is, I just want this voice in my head to shut up. He's like, you have to honor that voice. That yeah. voice has served you well at one point. So that the self-critic, what I, here's the, the methodology I teach people is, imagine your inner critic is driving the car of your life. It's a two-seater and it's been driving you, and you don't like the direction it's going. All you can do is switch seats, take the wheel. It's still going to backseat driver chirping in your ear. You have to, re- to calm it down. We have to recognize that it's there. We have to thank it or thank it for its participation and say, I've got the wheel now. It's never really going to go away. But instead of driving the car, it's now in the passenger seat. Instead of screaming at you like it did a year ago, now it's just whispering to you. It's mm-hmm. still going to be there. Sure. And there's no magical formula or el- eliminate it. But if we recognize it, we honor it, and then we still take control, that's where the power comes in. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think that is the thing that we don't, um, we often just don't, as you say, honor or acknowledge it, and we just let it be there. Um, because I say, like anything else, I mean, to overcome anything, you have to name it first. Right? You have to name it to tame it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and talk to me a little bit more about intention, uh, because I think that's a very profound thing as well. Um, so we explain for people the difference between intention and just like, um, or oh, having a goal or whatever. Sure. So uh, I'll, t- I'll tie it back to being $600,000 in debt. Mm-hmm. My intention was to get out of it. <laughs> so yeah. let's just start right there. But I didn't know how it was going to happen. And then you put on your sales hat. Well, I can, you know, the, I got into so much debt because I was only focused on growing the revenue of the company. My goal was I want to get to 20 million. I wasn't yeah. paying attention to the margin. You know, the mm-hmm. things we correct salespeople. Well, yeah, of course he said yes. He gave it to him for free. I was yeah. the king of that. <laughs> Didn't serve me so well. So once we started, you know, working with my coach, he's teaching me financial literacy. He's teaching me h- how to squeeze more margin out of every deal we're doing. And eventually over the course of time, we started looking for, for patterns in different things. So my intention was to get out of debt. My intention was to find a solution and find what they call an inflection point of an increased demand and a diminished supply in my marketplace. Mm -hmm. But I've got to keep looking for that. I can't assume there's only one way. I can't have the expectation that it's going to be in this bucket or in that bucket. I have to keep my mind open. So intentionality at its core keeps our, our, removes our blinders, allows us Mm -hmm. to try different things in a very psychologically safe way to then allow us to find the right path for us. It took us a couple of years to figure that out. But once we found that place, we had this inflection point. We hockey stick that business because my salespeople were, were, were open-minded. I created a, a, that fail forward mindset. We used to celebrate their failures, not celebrate their successes because the failures are where we learn. Right. Yeah. And, and I love that one. Yeah. When you're, you know, when you're, when you're losing, uh, when you're losing money on every deal and you think, yeah, but you know, I'll make it up in volume, right? 
Uh, that, that, that's, uh, it's, so, it, it's so funny you say that. So I, my, one of my coaching clients comes to me and we're talking at lunch one day and he goes like, so why do you want to work with me? He goes, why? Because you, you, you made the Inc. 5,000 six times. You're going to help me grow and scale my business. Mm -hmm. why, do you, why do you want to grow and scale your business? Well, if I double my revenue, I'm just going to double my, my income. I started laughing. I said, I am, mm -hmm. that's not how it works. Yeah. Fast forward, we're, we're, to, we're together for about a year then. He made a couple of changes, key changes on his leadership team. On the same revenue, he, he, he grew his, his margins 100%. His additional revenue, he grew his, his margins 500% and, and grew that overall revenue within two years, 70%. Once he got around that mindset of it, it doesn't, you know, uh, a, a dollar in doesn't equal $2 out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's, uh, that, that's really important for people because it's an easy, it's an easy mistake to make. Um, so what would you say to, um, you know, people around the idea of trying different things? Because sometimes people get a little bit paral um, you know, a little bit paralyzed or they oh, box sure. themselves in or they think I only have expertise in this narrow little space and they don't recognize the fact that they actually have things to offer maybe in other other areas. Oh, you, you hit the nail on that. We, we all have skills and unique and abilities. And, it, you know, when I got into coaching, it's so interesting because the things that came very naturally to me, I, I thought it was crazy that people wanted to pay me for them. Like, well, mm -hmm. I've been doing this all my life and this is my story. And, it, it, and it's, it's what's unique to us or, or, or is average to us is unique to others. So one, to recognize yeah. it. Two, for anybody who wants to beta test that, not only in your profession, not only in your sales career, you want to beta test it in your life. There's a great book out there called The Life by Design by Bill Burnett. He's a famous TED Talk. He's a Stanford professor. And he really takes you through the process in about 18 minutes and how to beta your life, how to beta different things, how to go out and talk to other people. You know, if you want to learn more, if I want to learn more about sales, I should call you up and I'm sure I can learn if I want to be a sales trainer or a sales guru, how do I do that? Who do I attract? What's my messaging? And you beta test it throughout several people. It's amazing what people will give you just from the perspective of their time and their efforts. And then we try a couple of different things and we, and we recognize that failure is really a misnomer. If we try something, and we learn from it. We haven't failed. We've just no. learned something. And then we learn more mm. and we learn more and we learn more. And eventually we're in a different spot. Yeah. And it's just as important to learn what you're not good at as what you're good at. Oh, I got to uh, listen. I, I, I'll go and bring Jennifer and she'll tell you she has a, whole, a, a list of three million things I'm not good at. Five things I am good at. So, and, that, and that's the great thing about life because when, yeah. you're, when you're good at a few things, then we should do more of that. You know, a great author I love is David Rendell. There's a book called The Freak Factory, and it's all about playing to your strengths, not your weaknesses, because he says, what's, what's weird about you makes you wonderful. What, what's unique about you makes you wonderful. And, and if everybody's going to the left and you're the person going to the right, double down on that. I mean, it goes back to business, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, when my business was a general staffing company for the world, I didn't do very well. When I tripled down on a certain specific skilled trades manufacturing niche, the business hockey stick. Yeah, Don, I think that's a great point as well, you know, to figure out, you know, what you're good at. But just going back to that other point is like, sometimes people do look back at, you know, they look back at their career and everything and they say, well, I, I you know I could never advise people or help people because mine is such a, it's, it's so diverse. I did this and then I did that and then I did the other. And you just think, yeah, it's a, it, it's a Jackson Pollock masterpiece your life is. And guess what? Oh, Jackson Pollock's yeah. are masterpieces. <laughs> well, so, you know, I used to worry, like, why would anybody hire me as a coach? I, I almost went bankrupt. What, I, what my clients have reported to me in doing my, my fancy market survey of why did you hire me is they, like, you've been there, you've done that, and you've survived it. I hired you because you survived it. You didn't yeah. die from it. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, we don't have to be experts in everything, but if we show up, we all have gifts to give, and especially like when we're, we're, we're parenting our kids. They all have amazing gifts to give, and, and it's our job to help them figure that out help them grow that if you have a person who's in your organization who struggles with who's great at closing but struggles at cold calling yeah. how do you get them in more cold calling environments and less or more more closing environments yeah. less cold calling environments and what can you put behind it from a from a crm perspective to get them more mm -hmm. opportunities because they're going to make you more money versus that person who just loves to network but can't close because they just want to yeah. be liked by everybody well what strengths can you play to for them there's a lot of different things we can do to help people play to their strengths yeah, and, and, that's a, and that's a great point to end on here because that's one that uh, we talk about a lot is this idea of, it's like when people do, do performance or does horrible performance reviews and they go, okay, Todd, 
Um, yes, you're doing very, you're doing pretty well at this. Now, here's the 10 things that you need to improve upon, right? And we focus in on that instead right. of saying, instead of saying, let's focus in, as you just said a moment ago, let's focus in on what you do well and give you more opportunity to do what you do well. Because chances are, what you don't do well, you're never going to do well. Uh, absolutely. No, I, you, that's a great place to close on because that's exactly how I look at the world. <laughs> well, listen, this has been fantastic. So all of Todd's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so, so um, basically my, my job is to meet entrepreneurs and leaders where they are, help them figure out why they're stuck, because people typically don't come to me because they want to have an ordinary life. They come to me because they want to have an extraordinary life. And an extraordinary life isn't a great life. I don't want to confuse me like I'm, I'm Tony Robbins Jr. I'm going to give you a great life. But what you can have is you can have a singular life life specifically designed by you in your business and it's always work-life integration it's never work-life balance i've never seen that work you know to it, it i coach my clients i walk their hero's journey with them from above and so i've been on my hero's journey i've grown and sold companies i've done that i my joy is when my client calls me up and they have an aha breakthrough moment with their kid at hockey practice like i had this week he's like i i, I was approaching my son with massive curiosity when he was struggling with hockey and then he had a breakthrough and then he was like bumping around, having a great time. He goes, so it's massive curiosity. It's, and it's massive accountability because most salespeople and certainly most CEO entrepreneurs don't want to be mm -hmm. held accountable, but because they're not held accountable, they don't get anything done. My magic, yeah. I think, is I have you tell me what you want. What life do you want to have? And I'll hold you accountable to do it because inevitably you're going to do things counter to that. We're going to talk through why you do self-defeating behaviors, what your itty-bitty shitty committee is saying to you to get you unstuck to really help you build that, that amazing life by design that I think everybody can do. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. So I would uh, absolutely encourage you to check out, uh, check out Todd. L listen, I think this, this year has been such a turbulent year that it's, that in many ways you got to look at it and maybe this is your reset time. Maybe this is the time to design the rest of your life. And, and I totally agree. Hey, listen, you probably, you probably spend a lot of money on your hobbies. You probably hire a coach to help you with your golf swing. How about hiring <laughs> a coach to help you with the thing that puts bread on your table? <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, I, and to that point, anybody who hears me on your show today, feel free to reach out. My email is Todd at extraordinaryadvisors.com. Website's extraordinaryadvisors.com. Mention that you heard me on here, your show. I'll give somebody 30 minutes of my time just to talk through what's going on for them, whether it's COVID related, whether it's, I had somebody call me the other day about parenting. So the, the, the four-step model applies to all parts of life. So I'm happy to give that time away as my chance to, to thank all those coaches who've helped me in the past by paying it forward. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So um, and make sure somebody jump on that immediately. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliners CRM. We'll see you all for an expert interview really soon. Thank you.